Yo, what is going on you guys? This is Mike or Geekermon and welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. So excuse my voice, I do have the flu, but that will not stop me from making videos for you guys. Before this video begins, I just want to say this top five list is just based on my opinion. This is not factual in any way. If you feel like there's another auto rifle or another weapon that is a little more meta, or if you think that one should be ranked higher than other, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. With that being said, don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and hit the bell if you haven't. We'll be doing a ton of trials live streams here on the channel, so if you have notifications on, you will get a push notification every time we go live. The community is a ton of fun with definitely encourage you guys to stop by. Now before I hop into this list, I do want to go over some of the buffs that are coming in the latest season. Auto rifles are actually going to make a return. They haven't really been that viable at high tier competitive. They've been fun to use in quick play and of course good in PvE. I think these changes are big enough to actually make a difference in the sandbox and you'll probably start to see a lot more auto rifles than before. Precision frame auto rifles are only getting a headshot modifier buff, but I do think if you're accurate, an extra 2-3 to three damage per bullet can make a big difference. Adaptive frames are getting buffed 2 damage per body shot and 3 damage per headshot, and rapid frame is getting both body shot and headshot buffed over 1 damage per shot. Seems like small numbers, but when you're firing at 720 rounds per minute, a couple of damage points can really start to put these guns back on the map. So without further ado, let's jump into the top 5 auto rifles you should be using in Trials of Osiris. Number 5, Uriel's Gift. Now there are a lot of good 450 precision frame auto rifles out there. My reason for choosing uh, the Uriel's Gift is that 1, you can still get it, 2, it's got great great base stability and range, and three, it comes with random rolls, so there are many ways to optimize your loadout. Now as far as sights go, if you're a PC player, you're probably looking for something that gives you really, really good handling. If you're a console player, you're probably going to want to find a sight that maximizes your stability. As far as perks go, the flash sight is probably my favorite. Uh, ricochet rounds and armor piercing or high cal are also solid options. Flared magwell is good if you're looking for that maximum reload speed, but it's really the last two perks that make this gun shine. Just a few of the top tier perks that this weapon can drop with. Tap the trigger, kill clip, under pressure, moving target, quick draw, dynamic sway reduction, and firmly planted. Any of those listed will work very well in Crucible. And if you're on console, I would definitely recommend a counterbalance stock. If you're on PC, maybe a targeting adjuster, radar booster. Another warning for this video, this is a console player's point of view. I will start to live stream more on PC, especially to collaborate with other people, but from my thousand of hours in Destiny experience, 99% of it has been on console. So take my advice with a grain of salt. So a couple of other good 450s, the ringing nail is all right. Positive outlook from year one has kill clip it can roll with, but honestly, Uriel's gift is probably gonna be your go-to for year three. All right, number four, the Valkadin. Now, before we get into this, the one other option that you could replace the Valkadin with pretty easily is the Misfit Auto. Both are 720s, both roll with random rolls, and both weapons have been known to absolutely shred it in the Crucible. Depends on your personal preference, but I usually tend to favor more towards the Valkadin. The one you're watching gameplay of in the background here has small bore, ricochet rounds, dynamic sway reduction, and kill clip. When Trials returns, I think that the Valkadin can actually be a really, really solid competitor. One, because it outguns SMGs at range, but two, it does well enough up close against shotgunners, and it's in the second slot, allowing you to easily pair it with one of the strongest snipers in the game today, the Revoker. Ever since the Recluse has been nerfed, a lot of people have been scrambling around trying to find a good solid option to put in the second slot. When Kill Clip procs on the Valkadin, you are going to feel like you have the Recluse back in your hands. The added bonus is that with a lower rate of fire and a higher range, you're going to be able to maintain the control a little better, but still be able to kill enemies at a further range than you would with the Recluse post-nerf. So if you can't let go of the Recluse, I would 10 out of 10 recommend the Valkadin. Don't be surprised with the newest buffs if you see a lot of these in Trials of Osiris. Number 3, the Monte Carlo. Now the Monte Carlo is a Destiny 1 favorite, and prior to the buffs is actually still a pretty viable weapon in the Crucible. So the Monte Carlo method not only gives you melee energy back as you do damage, melee kills and kills from this weapon also increase its damage. With an intrinsic perk like Rampage and pairing with something like Bottom Tree Golden Gun or Top Tree Dawnblade or even Middle Tree Hammer, good ranged melees pair beautifully with the Monte Carlo. Night Stalker, Stormcaller, and even Shoulder Charge can see benefits from using this weapon. Now the reason it's at number three and not at number one is because one you have to be running a specific subclass in order to maximize the 
a synergy with this build. If your game is not focused around melees, you're probably not going to see much of a benefit from rocking the Monte Carlo. But when done properly, this weapon can be one of the most lethal in the current sandbox. And with 600 RPM autos getting one of the largest buffs for auto rifles, don't be surprised if you see a ton of these going into Trials of Osiris. Number two, the Cerberus Plus One. What geek? I thought this gun was garbage. How, how are you going to put this number two on your list? Just watch the gameplay behind me. At 360 RPM, I don't exactly know how to categorize this weapon. I don't even know if this weapon will be receiving a buff. What I do know is that in Trials of Osiris, shotguns are rampant. And with Recluse getting nerfed, the snipers out there need a way to counter close range. This is where the Cerberus comes in. If you try to shoot this weapon further than 20 feet, it will take you 800 bullets to get the kill. But if someone is shotgun rushing you while you're trying to get a res and you're out of sniper ammo, the Cerberus can be your best friend. It does take a specific play style and it will take a while to get used to. But with an aim assist value of 60 and with a catalyst that lets you hone in the damage to be extra lethal up close, there is no reason not to give the Cerberus a shot. But I will say you cannot treat it like every other auto rifle. You have to understand this thing is designed to kill shotguns up close. That is its only purpose. Accuracy? No. It fires four bullets at the same time randomly out of the magazine. If you're looking for accuracy, you're probably going to want to go with a 450 or some kind of precision auto rifle. If you're looking for big damage, big clutch plays up close, hit them hard, the Cerberus is probably going to be a good bet. Statistically, this weapon is mediocre, but for Trials of Osiris, I really do think it has its place, especially for those of you that rock the Beloved Snipe. Your options when you rock the Beloved are primary slot hand cannons, primary slot auto rifles, and primary slot SMG. And when deciding what you're going to want to pair with your Beloved Sniper, I would urge you to give the Cerberus a shot because I think you're going to be surprised. Use it up close, use it in its range, beyond that hit him with the crispy snipes, and you're going to have a good time working your way through that flawless card. All right, now that we're done with number two, let's hop to number one, the Suros Regime. Now, if you don't know, back in the day, Suros actually used to be one of the most powerful auto rifles in the game. This thing did way too much damage per bullet. And back in Destiny 1, you used to be able to wipe whole teams with a single clip. Now, of course, the gun is not what it used to be back then. But with a perk combo like Spinning Up and Suros Legacy, the weapon fires faster as you fire it. And the bottom half of the magazine deals bonus damage. You also have a chance when you get a kill to return health back. Now, winning 1v1s, getting your health back, and staying alive are all him pivotal for Trials of Osiris. Your goal is to win the 1v1s and outlive the other team. This is the gun that will help you get there. And with the Catalyst giving you even better recoil control and an even higher chance to get health back on kills, keep this gun in your back pocket for Trials of Osiris because I think you guys are going to be surprised how often you'll see this weapon. Auto rifles can be tricky to use, but they're also very forgiving as opposed to hand cannons. With the damage buff coming in the new season and snipers being as important as they are for Trials of Osiris, a good auto rifle could be the difference between a win and a loss on the last card of your trials run. So I would 10 out of 10 recommend Soros Regime. High aim assist, high handling, high reload speed, health back on kills, more damage at the bottom of the mag, faster firing. So that's it for my top five weapons to use for Trials of Osiris, Auto Rifle Edition. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know one, what you thought of this video, if you'd like to see more like it, and two, what your current favorite auto rifle is in Destiny 2. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for all the support. Hopefully you'll stop by a live stream. There is going to be so much Trials of Osiris content coming. And until then, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys in tomorrow's video. Peace.